It's Thanksgiving week, so we are talking about gratitude. And food. I actually struggle to give compliments. I know you do, but it is important to show gratitude in the workplace. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. Like what? When you say stuffing, what do you mean? You did what with cranberry sauce? I'm just saying, don't knock it till you try it. Demoted. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Motorheads, welcome back to Demoted. We took a short hiatus. We were going through some stuff. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We're good. It was mostly scheduling issues. Exactly. I was a little poopy pants. I was kind of poopy pants yeah. um, about the state of the country, but we're back. We're back. We had Hunter Pence last week, I believe. Yes, which is great. And now we're just heading into our Thanksgiving meals, uh, yep. family time. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys are working from your parents' dingy basement, dimly yep. lit. And we're hoping you're turning to us in your commute home, be with the fam, and we can just provide you some insights on maybe gratitude in the workplace, maybe how to approach your family at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Perhaps what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Yeah. And these are all important things that we need to talk about. It's going to be a little less on the corporate side of things today. I mean, right? you know, the, it, it's getting dark early. I'm you know? exhausted. I know. And it's pouring rain outside right now. Did it's, you see my bit with the candle? I did. Like, I did. How true is that? It's, that's what it's like now. It hits 5 p.m. I'm like, okay, well, dinner should have been an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just go to sleep. Why is that? Uh, be because it is so goddamn dark. It is the Middle Ages. We should go live in Iceland where it's, is that where it's light out 24 seven? Or is it, it's Maybe like we'll Alaska. be more productive. I don't know. Okay. We could just stick to our Adderall. Maybe we just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so then we don't care what time it is. Um, well, anyway, Motorheads, first of all, we're grateful for you. Yes. We'll start there. We do want to take a second to thank the Motorheads. Thank you for being with us, those of you from the beginning. Yeah. When things were, you know, rough, we're still figuring out the tech, still figuring out our flow. Felt like we were strangers. We now, had some ups and downs. Now we touch toes now and we, we're just like, we're in our groove. Yeah. And right? the, really quick, these red shoes. Oh, my ruby red slippers. You're no longer in Kansas. Uh, these are on my Macy's storefront. And also I did see the Wicked premiere this weekend. Tell me everything about that. Can I? Yeah. Really quickly? Yes. Okay, Matt's like, I'm sick of hearing about I'm sure it. he is, but I haven't I haven't heard. The Wicked All I saw movie, was your reveal. I, with, thank you. you know, my transition video. Your transition video, which is a weird thing to say, especially in a liberal town like this. What she means is a transition yeah. on social media. From being ugly to being hot. She went to like this hot pink fairy godmother sort of situation. Wicked premiere, had these big bell sleeves. Yep. And the movie, you guys, if you're not a Wicked fan, do a little research on like just the lore of like- Do your own research, come Wicked. to your own conclusion. No, 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 but like just, just <laughs> it's such a beautiful piece of work. It's the prequel to The Wizard of Oz. Right. So the green witch, Dorothy's a character. It's like you see how someone becomes the tin man, the right. cowardly lion, the scarecrow, and it like weaves this all together so perfectly. I think the cleverness of that- Was it, the tin man formerly a sales rep? Uh, the Tin Man was. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing He inside. worked at Oracle, actually. Yeah, he worked at Oracle. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what happened. But the movie Relatable. was just, it was, John Chu is the director. Johnny he did Chu. Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah. Did he and speak? It was, did he speak at this premiere? So he was having his fifth child. And so he, they were like literally in the hospital room and he sent in a video. He's like, I've been waiting three years for this night, um, but I've been waiting my whole life five for children, my fifth man. child to come. Miss you all. Like, Hot take, no one needs five kids. Uh, if you can't all fit in an Uber together, it's too much. I Yeah, maybe. I've been thinking recently though that I kind of want three or four, but. So then then the least favorite one just takes the Uber by themselves. Well, in case I hate a few of them. I guess you want to get one right for sure. Then I'll get one right. You could kind of play it by ear, you know, one at a time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. See how that goes. Yeah. Got it. So yeah, that was my, my weekend. Did you do anything fun this weekend? What did I do this weekend? I played in a golf tournament as one does. Um, I did Prolon last week, which is my toxic once a year yeah. sort of diet thing, lost eight pounds in a week. Yeah. Despite being a co-ed podcast, the the toxic kind of body negative person is actually Ross. It's me. Um, so he it's does me. this thing called Prolon where you drink bean water for five days <laughs> and drop eight pounds of water weight. And he was cranky. I could tell. Even I was from cranky. Afar. I and was cranky. I would, I would like send you one email. You're like, what are you? Yeah, shut I up. respond, sure. Yeah, fine. Fine. Period. I had nothing left. My, even my fingers could barely move. I was so tired. I mean, I'm so sorry. And, and you would probably work out too. Because no, no, I could I actually couldn't. I thought about it and I was like, you're taking in 400 to 600 calories a day. I, I'll just die. Yeah. And are you shredding for any, are you doing like Hawaii post Christmas? Why I are you am doing that? Hawaii for Christmas. But I had been traveling for three months, basically, at least once a week for three months. Yeah. So I was eating like shit. I was the drinking like bod. crazy. Yeah. Being yeah. on set too. I was, was like with horrible. the boys. I was with the boys in Tahoe, like deleting beers. Yeah. I just was like, if you're going to do this, 
you deserve one week of suffering and, and diet just to like kickstart leading into Thanksgiving. Okay. So we're not going to promote Prolon publicly, no, no. Um, but Ross will promote it. It's more of a mental thing that I had to prove to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Totally get that. But Thanksgiving's coming. Thanksgiving's the coming. The opposite of Prolon. Yes. Is Thanksgiving. You're going to be eating. What's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? So it's like the thing I love about Thanksgiving, and this is like a diplomatic answer, is it all comes together. It all works so well together. I'm a stuffing guy. I know. That's weird. I love stuffing. Why Some people hate weird? stuffing. They're just like, it's empty carbs. Like, what's the point of what, what's the point of stuffing? It just like doesn't add much. There are some, okay, stuffing's a, a critical thing on the table. I agree. There are some things that are like definitely a little controversial, like cranberry sauce. I love cranberry sauce. Uh, Becca's mom makes great cranberry sauce. Like when, when people will throw marshmallows on top of yams. Yeah, that's that's. I sus. find that a bit polarizing. That's sus. But stuffing is a staple. It is. It's bready, mashed potatoes, bready, gravy, bready, turkey. Mash, yeah. Bready mash. All the carbs. Yeah. I only fill my plate with whites and browns. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't need the turkey. It's like you make the green vegetables just for show, just like bring a little color for the, the yes. look. Yes. But it never goes on the plate. No one wants your green bean casserole. Yeah. Aunt Pam. Seriously. Sorry. Seriously. Do you, what are you doing? Are you cooking? I'm cooking. I'm okay. cooking this year for Becca's family and Becca's brother's in-laws. Love. So I'm already preparing. I'm doing this 48 hour. I'm going to confit the turkey. Okay. Well, you guys don't know about Ross's. He's actually pretty big chef. <laughs> I'm a big kind of chef guy. And so it's a 48 hour process. Um, I'm going to you do this sleep. candied mashed You'll potatoes. Be watching. I'm actually going to sleep at their house <laughs> the night before because I need to cook the day before and I need to wake up and then hit it again. Wow. Do you have a little so, apron that says Corb? I, I do have an apron. It says, have you tried the sausage? And it points down. Good. Which the is, family will love that. They love that. It's a great Thanksgiving too. It's an election year. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. It's Ross yeah. is cooking. It's yeah. going to be good. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of talk, a lot of, lot to give thanks for. Um, what's your favorite dish? You said, I mean, not, not well, stuff, but you so, love stuff. So I love stuff. I love a pumpkin pie. Oh, pumpkin pie. Is that crazy? No. I and make I a pumpkin chiffon. What is a pumpkin chiffon? You don't bake it. It's something that doesn't get baked. Is it a wet, is it just the pumpkin insides? Yeah, but you whip it, you whip it with like cream and it kind of fluffs up and- you do a graham wow. cracker crust. You would love a fluffy cream. It's got to sit overnight in the, in the fridge because yeah. it's got to kind of harden, so to speak. Of course. But it is. You're not, yeah. I'll make you some. You're willing to take risks in the kitchen. And that's what I, I like about you. I will take risks in the yeah. kitchen. Are you, do, are you guys doing a Friendsgiving? There are concepts of a plan of a Friendsgiving. I have concepts of a plan. <laughs> of yeah. a Friendsgiving. <laughs> we haven't locked one down yet. Good. Good. But are you doing one? I saw this, this video that house. was like, despite- how everyone's feeling about this election. Like just know that there are those people still trying to plan a Friendsgiving. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Like shout out to them. Um, <laughs> That's us. We are doing a Friendsgiving That's with us. all the, all the GSB folks. Nice. So, of course. And, and they go all out. They, they all, all have out. their favorite dish and everyone's cleaning and it's nice. Cause they're like, just show up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Awesome. I'll just show up. Great. And eat. Uh, eat I, lo I love a Friendsgiving. Yeah. So. Your invite was lost. I know. I'm sorry guys. Your invite was lost. In the no, I couldn't make it. I, I think we had stuff going on. Yeah, it was kind of an intimate, you know, 18 people. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. 18 of our closest friends. So we couldn't, uh, yeah. it just, once you hit a certain number, there's just not a turkey that'll feed. There's not a bird big enough. Right. And so That's the truth. I did consider it. I'm going to have to make two birds this year. It sucks. No. Yeah. I told him rip out the oven and put a bigger one in because <laughs> yeah. this is bullshit. Is it okay if I do some demoing before we kind of <laughs> yeah. get started here? Yeah. I was <laughs> Exactly. Let's talk about like thankfulness in the workplace and even in your everyday life. I used to do a, a gratitude journal. It's like a five minute nightly thing yeah. where you just say three things that you were thankful for in your day Becca does this. and three things you're looking forward to the next day. Things she's grateful for, how much water she drank. Yeah. Okay. All I that love bullshit. that. That's good. That's really good. What was our highlight of the day? We do that. You guys do that with each other. That's, that's really important. I have to I wake her up if she falls asleep. Oh, or she gets mad because you're you're gaming and then I'm you come gaming back and then I come back in. She's like, she, what? She's like, what's your highlight? <laughs> <laughs> I I do think though, like expressing gratitude and receiving gratitude just helps you be have a more positive outlook on life and yeah. feel like you're making an impact. It does. And I have a story from one of my internships. I was interning at SVB, Ooh. rest in peace, Silicon R. Valley R. Bank, and I had this boss, Kathy Siciliano. Um, Kath. Love, just love women empowering women in the workplace. Me too. We will Fires say that. Me up. And I had built this like little PowerPoint of this video project that we were doing. And there was, they were hosting this kind of webinar with people. Actually, it was, what is a webinar live? Fireside chat? It wasn't a webinar. It's kind it of was a, a meeting. Yeah, I don't know, a virtual. <laughs> I don't know. Fireside chat. There were probably like 50 people in the room and she just stopped. And I'm literally a lowly intern, but I built this thing. Right. And she's like, just want to thank Natalie Marshall, our intern for putting this beautiful PowerPoint together. And I was like, you did not have to do that. 
Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh my God. Hi everyone. And then I went to Deloitte and I never received any words of affirmation the yeah. entire time there. Um, but I do keep a running list of like the incredible things that Annie does. We do like 360 reviews where not only do, do I say the things that I'm proud of and appreciative of, of her, but she also says it to me. That's great. Which I think is important. We all under her head. You say something nice about me. No, you say something nice now. And this is timely because in a 2024 Canva report, 83% of Gen Z are craving more appreciation in the workplace. Yeah. And if you're craving it, know that you also must give it away. Right. Right. You got, you got to give the gratitude. It's, um, I do think it's one of those things that people who are really, I think, confident in themselves, like that, not like arrogant, but mm -hmm. people who like lead well have no issue giving out gratitude. No. Like they don't feel like that's somehow taken away from themselves by yes. lifting others up. Yes. You know? I, that's what I look for in a man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true though. It's, <laughs> and it makes you look better. We've talked about this before, yeah. but to, yeah, have the confidence in yourself to just give it away. Yeah. Like, if, if you didn't do the entire PowerPoint, that's okay. It doesn't much matter. Right. Everyone in the room knew that I didn't really do anything of value at age, you Probably know, at age 20. It wasn't zero. It wasn't zero, but like- I don't it know if it was worth Kathy Siciliano's, you know, public thanks. praise yeah. in everybody's ears. Exactly. But it's like, that doesn't make Kathy look any less of a no. empowered We're still talking about Kath boss. today. I love Kath. What she is, sends me a Christmas card every year. Does she? Yeah. What is she doing now? I think she moved to LA. Um, she has this cute little Married son. director, just, I don't know. She's doing movie stuff. Yeah, she's on, she's on set. <laughs> she's totally. On, she's just on set. Totally. Do you, what do you do it for like to show appreciation in the workplace um, with your wife? With my wife. Besides um, the nightly. So her biggest thing is like, <laughs> my bar's so low. This is like kind of embarrassing. It's like, I just need to take action to do anything. It could be plan something. Yes. She, her favorite flower is a sunflower. So sometimes you pick up some sunflowers and they just, fall appear, flower. they just like appear in the kitchen. And yep. I'm just like in the back room, just like waiting, waiting for her to notice. And, and Roz is just waiting for her to then thank him. <laughs> oh my God. Babe. I love these flowers. I'm and I'm amazing. like, good. They were wild. You love them because they die quickly. And you know, you're welcome. Yeah. I mean, we do our performance reviews. So we do like what worked, what do we, what do we, you know, what didn't, what do we like about each other? Not mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. But well, you guys have been together too we long. We suffer through it together. Yeah, yeah. At this point, we are one. We are one. It's terrible. <laughs> we have just one brain We've that we We've coagulated in sort of one gelatinous sort of ooze. I was just talking to Annie about like relationships. This is kind of a pivot from the workplace, but I think what I value about Matt and I is that we do take time to just be like, we're so lucky. It's like lucky girl syndrome. Have yeah, you seen yeah, this yeah. on TikTok? The people who just say like, I'm lucky, I'm blessed. My life is incredible. Yeah. Just actually end up having that life. And Matt and I, I think just like affirm our relationship verbally. We're like, we have the best relationship. Like, God, we are so lucky. Like everyone's so jealous of us because we're incredible. And I actually think that really helps. It does. Like, cause then we love each other more and appreciate each other 100%. more. 100%. And I think it's just like good self-awareness and perspective. Cause like, we Definitely. love to complain. We do. We do. We love to complain. I, I said that to Annie. I was like, my relationship is the one thing in my life that I don't want to shit on or like, yeah. tr you know, I, I treat it with such respect and I value it so highly that if I talk down on it, it will like devalue this thing. That's like my partner for, for yeah. life, hopefully. Oh and, and like, just, I mean, not to get too far down the relationship road, you just shouldn't do that generally, especially yes. publicly to anybody else. You no, don't want to totally affect agree. their opinion of you. Cause you know, it's a classic this person's not smart. I fucking hate this person. We're going to break up. And then you get married and everyone's like, we'll never Ooh, forget what you I said. I can't forget that. Yeah. All that shit you said. Oh, so you shouldn't brutal. do that anyway. Give thanks in your job and your relationships. 87% of people in this 2024 Canva report said that appreciation is the secret sauce for job satisfaction, which I agree. It's like, if you're just working your ass off, I picture these people in investment banking who just are in this thankless role. Like yeah, their yeah. bosses do, have never said good job. They're only making 800 K a year, which is exactly like, the poor just things, suffering. poor things. Yeah. They chose that life. I actually need to re like change my, my favorite Thanksgiving meal or food oh. is actually stats. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause just fill me up with the stats. Just, here comes the train. I just, uh, I just love ah. slurping up stats. I do. Yeah. I hope my drunk uncle brings some just good green stats peas of stats, a little spoonful of green pea stats. I do. Do you have any stats for me? What hundred percent of people sitting in this chair love stats. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's, thank you so much for that. Yeah. Um, I do think you have four things though, that you want to share with me. I do. So here's the thing about those. Yeah. Um, they're on, the yeah, they're on the computer. Okay. They're not so much in 
We have on a problem. Paper. And one thing I don't appreciate about Ross that I do appreciate about Becca is that she has the ability to write. Okay. She is literate. She can write with her hand. Yes. And Ross, when we sit down, we have these, these outlines and then we write notes on them for like, Oh, let's add this stat here. You know, Mr. I love stats. Let's do, add this anecdote. I know. And Ross is sitting there not writing a thing. He's never written a single note. I was taught to write life. with a full fist he's, grip he's around the pen. He's holding a pen with a fist, like a caveman <laughs> looking at me with not a thought behind his eyes. And I don't know what to do. And Becca's over there writing. She's transcribed. She's typing. And so now Ross was going to share four exciting exciting things with me that are on his computer. So we don't have those anymore. We don't have those anymore. But we're going to back a feed them. Yes. So I, I know what you're asking. A lot of people keep DMing me, DMing me about this. They're like, so what are your like four keys to gratitude at work? And I'm like, oh my <laughs> yeah. God, I guess I'll just talk about it. I on know. The it's like, give me the link for those four keys of gratitude at yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. I actually didn't make these up. Um, they're on some article online that I found. It's probably like if you type in gratitude at work, it's probably the first thing that comes up. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be. And I think it was written at an edu.edu. I want to say it was a Berkeley article. If it was edu, I mean, this has to be. That's why I was for somehow. sure going to use it. But yeah. you know, like gratitude, it's really about the whole person. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you, you can't just like zero in and focus on one spot because these like- this is not just a person at work. This is just a person person. It's not like severance where this is your work personality. It's your right. whole personality. Right. It's your whole personality. I do appreciate that Annie, like she'll one time she said, I really appreciate that you take your weekends and you're so invested in your family and your friends and you prioritize those things equally to work and you, you aren't just like obsessed with your job and let these other things fall by the wayside. Like I want to be the person you are with your relationships. Yeah. And I was like, okay, why am I crying? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. She's but got a way true. with words. It is the whole, it is the whole person. Yeah. She, she was like, Ross, I don't hate you as much today as I normally do. And I was yes. like, Thank you so much. They, I don't know what I did, but I'm I'm here for it. Ross and Annie do need to have a little gratitude <laughs> session, but yeah. we'll take that offline. We're working on that. What's the second thing? Well, the next one is just there's, there's no one size fits all. You of know, it's course. like it's like leadership. Like everyone, like what's your leadership style? Like there, you shouldn't really have a style. It should be like I need I, I will lead in the way that needs to be led in that moment. One thing you I know? learned today from. Matt took a class on like giving feedback and because of course that's just like a class at Stanford. It is. And all about that. the finding was like, give it constantly. Mm -hmm. It's not just because I, I find myself writing things down to like, oh, I'll talk about this in our next feedback session. If you're feeling appreciative of something someone's doing in the moment, say it. You don't have to yeah. build this list of accolades to then reveal in your mid-year performance right. review. Like it feels, feel good. Weird. it feels weird. It's like, remember when you did that one thing yeah. three months ago? It's like, no, just give real time yeah. feedback. Yep. Yeah, keeps the people going. It's fuel. Yeah, and fuel some people some people don't want real time feedback. I think that's my parallel. Yeah, to I guess this. I would say praise. Yeah, praise. Real time praise is good. Real time you praise know, for say, sure. Praise praise publicly, criticize privately, and yes. But in the in the not one size fits all, I think it's helpful to have that level setting meeting. Like, you know, how do you like to receive feedback, praise, yeah. all these things, and yeah, I mean, it it also like in the workplace, it has to start at the top. And that's one of them. It's that it's got to be leadership's got to do it first. Yes, and show people that this doesn't feel weird. I I, I admittedly a lot of my life have felt like giving praise feels cringy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like they it's know. Not, it's not in your DNA. Yeah. Like they're like, they know like, like my love language is not words of affirmation. Like how I display it is definitely not words of affirmation. Yes. It's something that I've really tried to work on. Cause I know people, you get it. You're like, I feel a little bit, a little light in my soul. And so I need to be better at that. And that's just, I don't know why for a long time. That's was just hard for me. It like is a sign of weakness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a big strong like man. You are. And you know, I'm, you know, I'm getting better at it, especially in this time. It's this, this trying time. It's, These trying it's really times good for people for like to, me. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's good tough. for you to eat a dish out those, those compliments. Yeah. yeah. But in a meaningful way, I think when you compliment me, it feels a lot more, it has more gravity to it well, because, because it doesn't it's happen. So rare. It's so rare. It's like, it's like a once a year, Ross will be like, that was a funny video. And then he'll like walk away. I'm like, what? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dear journal. Yeah. <laughs> Today, Ross <laughs> complimented me. <laughs> Uh, yes. The, the last one is that it has to be part of the culture and that starts with the leadership team. Like it does sometimes feel weird if it comes out of nowhere. People are like, wait, why are they buttering me up? Like, why does this feel so out of pocket and kind mm -hmm. of fake? I just made you a know? video of the all hands like, and our weekly kudos goes to Jeremy. You get a $5 Starbucks gift card. Yeah, <laughs> like, exa exactly. And I do think it's like giving those shout outs or, you know, doing it in the all hands, like showing that appreciation is part of your company culture. If it is, it's yeah. important. Yeah. And it just like, otherwise it feels contrived and suspicious. And so, you know, we, we talked about it. You just do it, do it often and it gets, it normalizes it. Yeah. So Ross, if you want to give me a couple more compliments here and there, um, I'm absolutely okay with that. 
I will, New Year's resolutions are coming. Okay, let's they're, wait. Let's wait coming. till the new year. Let's, You're right. Yes. Here are some things that we're thankful for in the office. Yeah. I like to thank John for blowing up the bathroom constantly and leaving the door open afterwards as it's very close to me. So I get to smell it for about 45 minutes after. John. Thank you, John. Thank you. I am just so thankful for Dave for explaining my job to me in meetings. I love that. I would be so lost without his guidance. It's why you need a man. Yeah. To in mansplain. the workplace and outside the workplace. Thank you. We've always said that. I'm thankful for Gary who replies all to emails with just thanks. It's good because everyone wanted to know. That's how you show gratitude. Right. Thanks, period. Hi, I just acknowledged this company-wide email. Thanks. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Gary. Gary, it was meant for you. No, thank you, Gary. So thank you. Yeah. I'm grateful for Patricia who follows up with a Teams message 30 seconds after she sends her email saying, hey, did you get that? We love the double tap. You know what? No. I got to hit you on all channels. You know who responds to emails in 30 seconds? Me. Annie. And me, I, I have a problem. Do you? Yeah, as soon as I see it, I, I treat it like a text. Wow, I mean, my Inbox text, zero. I, I have I have 150 texts, so. No, I know. Yeah, you I'm hate actually that. working on you a graph. You hate that about me. I'm actually working on a graph that I will be releasing in the new year. Of, of Average text. time response between you and me. <laughs> Yours is cr creeping up to eight hours. Wait, stop, it's was, more than that. It's like 24. The most recent one was about 12. I'm sorry you were asking for a 10K investment and I had to think on it. <laughs> I was saying, are we good on dinner? I was like, are we cool to do a dinner on the 19th? I'm going to send you an invite. You said sent you an invite and I accepted it. And then I sent, I just hearted the message you also last accepted night. That. You also accepted that 48 hours later. I was, it was a weekend. I was at the Wicked premiere. It's, it was a weekend. That is fair. I'm sorry. I'm not always on. Okay. Sometimes I like to unplug. No, sometimes I feel embarrassed to respond to you on text. You should. I feel embarrassed because I'm like, I mean, you know, I'm like. I no, I have shit to do. I have shit to do. Okay. All right. Sorry. This is this is not a, uh, a therapy session for us. We'll, we'll get there. That'll, we're going to dinner together on Tuesday. To process me to go to dinner, which was fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. It and was I weird. said, okay, what are we doing? What Am are we I talking in trouble? about? No, literally, I are felt you gonna so break up with in me? trouble. I texted Annie. I was like, did something happen? <laughs> did you really? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, no, okay. So we're breaking happened. up. Yeah, we're breaking up. We're not breaking up. All right. Thank you to Ryan, who always starts his sentences with, I may be wrong, but before delivering something that is absolutely wrong. Yep. Thank you so you much. You are wrong. You may be, you are wrong. Okay. You can, you can totally say no to this. Yeah. But <laughs> and I'm going to, but go on, please, please fill the space. I, as a self-deprecating person do like to get ahead of any potential yeah. thing that they would say. Yeah. Anyone would ever say to me. So I'll like, I'll start everything with self-deprecating knock. Like, okay, this is the dumbest idea ever, yeah. but. So insecure. So, I'm always so Take insecure. it early, guys. Like, here's the thing. Like, first yeah. of all, this may be the actually the stupidest thing you've ever heard. Yeah. You may want to die after this. I know I'm the ugliest, fattest person on earth, but could I borrow your skirt tonight? <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Actually. Like so unnecessary. Uh, okay. The positive self-talk is going to be my New Year's resolution. Yeah. I just feel so blessed to have Linda for marking every email as high priority. Really helps me understand that nothing matters. Nothing matters. Yeah. In the workplace, nothing matters. Nothing's a real fire drill and no one's going to die. No one is going to die. Unless you are like an EMT or something. Except I did work in crisis management where it felt we would have the, the 3 a.m. war room. Yeah. Sometimes those things are urgent, but even then they're like, there's a trending Twitter. I'm like, guys, just, you know, trending is not three likes. Yeah, in yeah. reference to cybersecurity. Yeah. No one no, cares. No, this post is blowing up right now. Guys, everyone's going to see this. We are <laughs> fucked. <laughs> and I am very grateful for Amanda who always schedules meetings in between other meetings because quote, that's the only time available because I like to have back to back to back to back to backs. So thank you, Amanda, for doing that. I didn't want to go pee. I never do. Nope. I'll just hold it. I actually wear a diaper. So <laughs> I'm good. That's one way to do it. Super appreciative of Sean, who is a self-proclaimed devil's advocate. Mm. Your contrarian energy is really helpful in all of our meetings. Let's us go five minutes over. Thank every, you. Every company's got one. Yeah. There's a, there's a Sean everywhere. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Thank you to did, all these folks. Did we consider this point? <laughs> well, you know, it's three minutes after this meeting should be over, Sean. So you should have considered it, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Okay? How about you consider shutting up? Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Shut your pie hole, Sean. Okay. Well, really quick. Also, I know we, we, want, to, we also want to praise specifically our motorheads. Yes. We mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we are very grateful for you guys, your participation, your, your engagement, honesty. your honesty. Yeah. You know, willingness to share with us, yes. submit audio messages of you talking that we can use on our podcast. You're so like, brave. You're so brave. That helps us have content to talk about, to make these episodes. And yep. this podcast really would be nothing without We've you. We've been out of ideas for six months. We've done and You nothing. guys just keep doing this for us. We, we give you a couple stats a week and then we just read your guys stuff, which yep. we love. Yep. So um, we're hoping in the new year to continue doing that. And we're thankful for you. I, every time I meet in Motorhead, I'm, I'm surprised. I, me too. That they're a Motorhead. We've met them all. 
We've, we actually have met them all. <laughs> so feels good. So we love you guys. Really quick, but though, before we get into promoted, demoted, quick word from our sponsors. I have a story, actually. I went to a dentist. It was the- Oh, you went to a dentist? Went to this dentist. It was the closest one to me. I, I, I go by proximity because I'm a lazy person. Yeah. Went to this dentist and I didn't read any reviews, anything. I was like, great, it's down the street. And she literally gave my friend a root canal and told me I had eight cavities. She told me I'd have to take work off to get these cavities filled. Like, take a day where I would go under anesthesia. And we also didn't even do x-rays. She was using this weird buzzy tool that told me I had cavities. Okay. So you just went out of nowhere. And then I started reading reviews and this lady is rated the lowest in San Francisco. I guess the moral of that story is I wish I had known about ZocDoc. Some things in life, okay to be a crapshoot, whether it's trying a new type of milk in your coffee, buying that weird thing from an Instagram ad, or, you know, mixing it up with a new takeout spot. But finding the right doctor should not be a total crapshoot, Natalie. I agree. You're going to the dentist today. Did you use ZocDoc? I am, and I did use ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare high quality in-network doctors with more than 100,000 healthcare providers across every specialty. Plus ZocDoc appointments happen fast, typically within 24 to 72 hours of booking. You can even score same day appointments. So stop putting off those doctor's appointments and go to ZocDoc.com slash demoted to find and instantly book a top rated doctor today. With Masterclass, your loved ones can learn from the best of the best to become their best. Masterclass is the only streaming platform where you can learn and grow with over 200 plus of the world's best. And that's why Wirecutter calls it an invaluable gift. And you know I'm going to take that Gordon Ramsay Masterclass because, well, I got to put on for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. That's up to 50% off at masterclass.com slash demoted. All right, let's get to uh, promoted, demoted. Do we like it? Do we not like it? Cool, not cool. Let's start with taking a walk with your cousins before Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, well, you know you're smoking a joint, right? You know you're smoking a joint. <laughs> now we got the vapes out. You know. Yeah. I've never had that relationship with my cousins, sadly. I don't like have a huge family, so I've mm. never been able to be like, let's go. My cousins were kind of like bad boys. They're oh. all boys also. Uh. And they like were actually kind of stoners and I was too young to be able to like be exposed to that. So I never got to have that fun time right. with them. You were the youngest cousin. Yeah, you. I feel like you have such a squad of cousins. I got a squad. Yeah. I'm the oldest. Also so mostly boys. I'm leading the march. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm leading the march to the, the bathroom or the backyard or wherever we need to go. And then we come back with our eyes just absolutely bloodshot. And- Whole family hates you. Eat 4,000 calories. What I do make sure to do is be extremely hungover on Thanksgiving day. I'm That's a big, helpful. I'm a big participator in Blackout Wednesday <laughs> yeah. um, as kind of like the hometown hero celebrity <laughs> back home baller. It's really fun to go back and just like see all the guys I kissed in high school yeah. and like maybe kiss them again and like make sure they're doing okay. Yeah. And just like, you know, kiss on the cheek here and there. She still uh, got it. Little pregame at my friend Maureen's house, you know, Marine. I don't do that too much anymore. But like when I was in college coming home, I was like, oh my God, this, I'm about to burn Menlo Park to yeah. the ground. The Palo Alto bars are not safe. I grew up going to patio with a you fake did. ID. Wow. Yeah. Patio is a, uh, a big Stanford GSB bar that we played beer pong league in. Yeah. It gets a little. And old pro. Did you have old pro? Old pro. Yeah. yeah. RIP. Yeah. Andrew Lux bringing it back. Yes. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. I heard. So. Um, anyway. So. Promoted. Promoted. Promoted or demoted beer pong in your thirties. Can you explain beer pong league? Beer pong league is quite literally what it sounds like. It is basically the entire school you sign up for, you build these teams, five, six people. And, and let's set the stage. Uh, these are business school kids. So they're in their thirties, mostly. A lot of late them are in their thirties. Yeah, 30s. late twenties, early thirties. And they're about, I don't know, 75 teams, 60, te 60 to 75 teams. Every Thursday, you go to the patio. There yeah. are just tables lined up, cups, balls, Flying everywhere. I actually have a photo. We'll put it here. We'll throw a photo up there. And it's grown adults playing beer pong. And it's so fun. And not taking it seriously. Not only beer pong, but let's everyone's in costume. People are in costume. Yep. All the teams have costumes that they wear. Yeah. So you're seeing, you know, five banana suits running around right. and five pink Barbie hats right. and these just squads of people. Matt's team wears these one piece jumpsuits. Yeah. And, and, and like, but you also think, oh, these seem like fun loving people, but no, they're pissed off when they miss shots. Oh they're yeah. They're pissed off when they lose. Oh yeah. It is not fun during game time, but then game time's over and then you go rip it up on the dance floor and then it gets weird. Yes. Yes. Um, I struggle with it because it's on Thursday night. So my not participation a great night. in the dance yeah. floor is not uh, quite frequent. Yeah. Um, but it's, I've been a couple times to beer pong league. Do you ever go to the undergrad, uh, I don't know, cafeterias and ever get food there late night? Uh, no. And that's dark. That's dark. That sounds really dark. Are they yes. open 24 seven? They're, um, they're like open till three or something in the morning. Yeah. It's like 
late night beer pong. Perfect timing. Perfect time going there, getting chicken tendies with bloodshot eyes, looking at these 19 year olds, just looking at me like, why is the old man being weird over there? And I'm like, I'm so just eating I'm chicken just tenders. Eating. Get out of here. <laughs> like, please. Please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a cool guy. The guys, we, for those of you who don't know, we, I give the motorheads, you know, my, my, the insights about my life. Matt lives in a house with 11 people. Mm -hmm. It's six couples, one couple's long distance, and the 11th is me, who I, I'm there kind of part time. And the boys just made the garage a man cave and they got a pool table and a dartboard and they are in there 24 seven, just putting grinding. in reps, just yeah. grinding. They are discussing at darts now. And the girls said, you know, because it's your man cave and it's your space, you guys have to clean it up. And we walked in there the other day and it smelled so bad because <laughs> <laughs> they just pregame and postgame this beer pong league yeah. and it is disturbing. And it stinks. It stinks in there. It stinks. And we're just going to leave them in there. Like, I'm sorry, I can't, yeah. I can't help you. It's no longer... You're no longer welcome there. I've never been welcome. Yeah. And I don't want to be. You don't want to be welcome. So beer pong in your 30s, promoted. Promoted, demoted, Thanksgiving leftovers. Promoted. Promoted. Easy I eat promote. Those, eat those for weeks. Yes. My dad will be like heating up a piece of ham December 31st. Yeah. He doesn't care. Yeah, still got it. He still got it. It's like, still okay. There's like, a little green on it, but it's our, fine. Our family of four will be finishing all this food yes. and my dad will be eating 95% of it. It's the right thing to do. Thank you. Huge fan. Promoted, demoted, taking your shoes off in the office. Demoted. I'm going to have to demote it. Demote it. If I took my shoes off with my ballet flats right now, like I did at TSA pre-check yesterday, yeah. I was barefoot. Mm -hmm. That is a crime. That's a crime. Yeah. And they should have taken you in. Frankly, you shouldn't be here right now. Definitely. All right. Promoted, demoted, gift baskets to clients. Promoted. Promoted. Last year I did gift baskets yeah. with like a sweatshirt and a mug. What are we doing this year? This year. Tickets to the premiere. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this year I am giving my like closest favorite for clients, diamond tennis bracelets. Oh, wow. Yeah. Andre so, Swagacy. If you guys want to work with corporate Natalie, yeah. Yeah. You if you want to sign, if you want to sign a long-term 2025 partnership with me, you might be getting a diamond tennis bracelet. Wow. Anyway, I think giving gifts to people, people love gifts. Even if they say gifting is not their love language, like nothing makes people happier, happier than opening a gift. That's why salespeople will give unsolicited gifts to folks. Be like, Hey, I just want to talk to you. And it's like, you just give me a pair of Jordans. I think I'll talk to you. Absolutely. Oh, do, yeah. Would you do some gift bribing? Yeah, we would do gift bribing. Love that. It's what was the best thing. gift you gave? Jordans. You gave someone Jordans and then did they sign? They had a meeting with me. They did not sign. That is so sad. It's sad. But it was like the opportunity was there. Yeah. I blame myself. Okay. It was my fault. Promoted or demoted, calling yourself a CEO when you're the only employee at your company. It's technically true. It has to be demoted. It's, demo it's demoted. It's demoted, but it is funny when like brands make us sign agreements. It's like, technically I am the CEO of this company. Yeah. And I, they're like, what's your title? I'm like, I used to just put owner because I was embarrassed. You have to put owner. I do put owner, but technically in documents, it is CEO. It, like, if, I'm like, if this gets legal, it goes somewhere for whatever reason. Who are you the chief of? The Dex? Yeah. Your dog? Yeah. Okay. Got it. He eats when I say he eats. Ross wants to be called CEO and that's why. So badly. Women are from Mars, men are from, what is it? Men are from Mars, women are from <laughs> Venus. I'm not sure. That's why we're different. I've never said Men CEO. are different because we have a penis. And I, I think that's what the rhyme is. I was speaking at Okta, this conference, and I was yep. doing like this live broadcast desk. And the what I didn't know was opening before me uh, was Alex Honnold, the guy who free solo climbed El Cap oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at Yosemite. Is that uh, the guy's missing fingers? There's a documentary about him. I'm not sure. Yeah. He literally bear climbed from the bottom to the top without a rope, yep. uh, El Capitan, one of the largest mountains in Yosemite. I'm yeah. not sure. It's like huge, huge accomplishment, whatever. And I get up to the live broadcast and they're like, thank you, Alex Honnold for sharing your story about climbing El Cap with your bare hands. Next, we have corporate Natalie, the CEO of work from home jokes here to talk to us <laughs> about, <laughs> it's like, Oh my God, I'm in pain. Yeah, well, I actually froze. I was like, that's not who I'm following. And that's not what you're going to call me. I'm scared and I'm yeah. sad. And it went great. It was fine. I told a few jokes. Um, anyway, I told a few jokes, got out of there. Yeah. My hands. It was a live broadcast. So I wasn't sure if anyone was laughing, but here we are. Yeah. Those are the best kind. Should we get into dear demoted? Let's get into dear demoted. Would you like me to read the first one? Yes. Hello. Love the pod. Anonymous, please. No shit. Guys, they're always anonymous. We make them anonymous unless you say, hi, my name is Ross Pomerantz and this one's about me. Yeah. Okay. This one's
This one's mostly for Natalie, but always welcome Ross's thoughts that aren't poo poo pee pee. So I will be sitting this one out. Thank you for reading it. Hope you can use your Deloitte pass to enlighten some of us on corporate reorg victims. The company I work for in the Fortune 500 just finished an 11 week engagement with Deloitte. They're giving us their observations for our quote operational effectiveness, and our management is meant to do the readouts and make a plan. All I hear is reorg, 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 doom, reorg. I personally think management only engages with consulting agencies when they already know what they want to do and need to spend millions to validate it when they were going to do it regardless. As someone who used to work for that big D, what do you think? Any insider knowledge, thoughts, curious what you think I should anticipate? The old operational effectiveness assessment. Um, everything Deloitte does is just rinse and repeat. They've delivered this deck time and time again. Gotta change that logo though. They change the logo. I change the logos. Yeah, yeah. And there's like little people and there's this slide that it's like the human capital slide where there'll be a million little icons of people and then they'll, they'll like, you know, blue out or whatever your company color is. These are the people you actually need. Yeah. Yeah. There's only six left. <laughs> and there's like six little, little dudes left on the other side of the screen. So yes, um, I think you're right to think reorg doom reorg is coming. Uh, and you're right to think that your leadership does just want to be validated because, all Deloitte's doing is interviewing your leadership on what they want and putting it into a pretty slide. Um, the readout sounds terrifying. That sounds like, you know. That sounds terrifying. Like Hunger Games. I am a little nervous for you. Please update us. Um, I think just all you can do is, you know, stick with the people close to you and your team. Make sure the people above you, you're being a squeaky wheel. Like you, you're talking, you're saying all the things you're doing. You're being present in meetings. If you have that one in-person meeting, you're going, you're there, you're showing up. So and you're looking at jobs. And you're looking at jobs <laughs> you're and you're jobs. firing up that LinkedIn and making sure it's nice and up to date. Yes. I mean, reorgs ultimately mean somebody's got to go. Yes. That's always how it goes. And get that, get that coding certificate. Make it, yourself a technical hire. It's, it's funny. So I just, in, in my newsletter that comes out tomorrow, there's a, a quick article about how the leaders of Google are, are delivering this exact news, this reorg kind of like concept, but they're all in costumes. Stop. So they one of them's like in a starfish. Got, yeah. They did it on no. Halloween. Uh, Sundar Pichai is wearing like a 404 costume, not found shirt. Like oh one, one God, guy's wearing nerd. a full starfish and they're talking about reorgs and they're basically what they're talking about efficiency and how they need to do, you know, optimize the efficiency. All it basically is like platitudes for, Layoffs. we got to cut some, we got to cut some people. Layoffs are coming. And so they were just doing that. And I find that to be utterly hilarious and heartless and hilarious and perfect for a video. Starfish and four, yeah. That's, it that's makes you think much. of the, the video you showed, the goth guy, the guy who's doing the goth, but just like talking that totally. That is my much. funniest, Like yes. Like that that a CEO just like in a starfish outfit doing that exact bit. Well, it's, but like, our, like, it's like our today in corporate America. Yeah, exactly. So, except it's actually layoffs, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, subscribe to Ross's newsletter if you haven't. Silly Valley News. Silly yeah, Valley it. News. Um, okay, this one is submitted by PTO Lover 365 Love that. I've been at my current company for over three years and have saved up a lot of PTO for some upcoming weddings. And I plan on taking a honeymoon in 2026. That being said, I have a shit patch and they took away our prospects this year. So I don't foresee making good money this fiscal. Should I leave or stay for the PTO and risk getting put on a PIP? I'm going to leave Mr. Sales to this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, what do you want? Like, you know, a PIP is essentially death sentence. So if you want to use it, like you have to get paid out on your PTO regardless. So you could go on PTO, but you could also just wait. You could go on PTO, then end up on PIP and look for a job while you're on PIP and still be getting paid. Will they PIP you if you're like, I'm on my honeymoon around They're Christmas not going to PIP you on your honeymoon, but they will likely PIP you when you come back Yeah, and be like, hey, like we, we need to see some results. And if you feel like things are as dire as they are, then you should be figuring out whatever your exit plan is regardless, whether that is taking your PTO because you want space, but are you going to feel stressed? Like when I come back, are you going to is that going to hurt your PTO when you're just dreading this time? Yeah. You could say, I'm going to end up quitting. And I'm going to get paid out of my PTO anyway, and then take a vacation after that. And for as long as you want, not be stressed. It's however you want to like line it up, prioritize it. But from what it sounds like you want to go and you know, you should go and you should figure out what the order of operations is. My favorite thing is to not take your PTO, but sort of not be there. Yeah. Like Friday. The half ass PTO. My my old boss actually told me, he's like, you know, if you're taking a half day on a Friday, you don't have to put it into the system. I'm like, yeah. why am I such a goody two shoes rule follower? Yeah. That was pre-COVID. That was that's like like working during the holidays because nobody's actually working and everyone just leaves no, early. You kind of yeah. like maybe show up for a second, then bounce, but I'm not taking PTO for this. No one's here. No one's, no one's working here. anyway. We're fine. They yeah. all took PTO. I'm not. So anyway. 
You Definitely use your PTO. Like that. Here's another Dear Demoted. I recently started a new job and we're going to all types of lunches, happy hours, and even dinners. I've only been here for a month, lol. Anyway, at these events, I just feel like I sit there quietly because I don't know anyone yet, except my direct boss and a couple other coworkers. Advice on how to include myself in the conversation without looking like an idiot and looking like I'm enjoying my time there. Of course, I want to give off first good impressions and to everyone. And frankly, I'll enjoy my time more if they're, if I'm engaging in conversation rather than being quiet, unless someone speaks to me first. Thanks. Okay. From two social butterflies here. Yeah. I do find it very difficult sometimes at different tables and settings and areas to contribute or feel like I'm contributing or provide something of value. And I think it's also okay to sort of be a listener and just like be taking things in and sort of ad libbing here and there. Like, Oh, totally. You know, like that's, yeah. it's, it's, we joke about it on zoom and someone just like goes nothing for me. Yeah. Mute. Thanks. Adding something here and there laughing, being engaged, not being on your phone, not looking upset that you're not contributing. It's active listening, active listening, body language, yes. nonverbal cues. Yes. You don't need to be things. like, Oh, I also read this article that blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, it is hard, but I do think what you're saying about like showing up at first impressions is really important and will actually pay off. Even if you're sitting there seemingly quiet. Yeah. I mean, I think you can also ask questions. Yes. Like when in doubt, just ask a question. And I know you're probably like, I'm scared. It's going to be a dumb question. Then ask a personal question to someone who you're sitting yes. next to, like just ask them something. So like, especially how, no how long you've been here? What do you, at, yeah. ha at, at happy hour. Yeah. Like they like, want to talk about their personal life. Yeah. You know, and then it just leads into a million other things. And then people are like, whoa, they're interested in me. Any new year's resolutions coming up for anyone? Like, yeah. I don't know. Everybody loves talking about themselves when they're given the opportunity. Yes. You know? Cultural moments too. Like I, I don't know. I think as a woman in the workplace, I would certainly rather talk about some pop culture moments, things going on. Do you guys watch love is blind? I don't know. Yeah. That's that, that's that shit. I do like, yeah. I'm going to throw that out there. I don't need to talk about like this recent article about, you know? Yeah. No, you haven't seen love is blind. What, like what shows are you guys watching? Exactly. Oh, you're of course excited for gladiator to come, to come out. I'm so stoked. I'm okay. looking at IMAX. Great. 3 PM showing. I'll be at the wicked matinee. next door. I'll be at yeah. wicked next door if you need me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be dressed as the gladiator. But it is difficult. And I think we did an episode on uh, giving a wedding speech. And I think we talked a lot about like preparing, coming with anecdotes. I think that could be helpful for you to listen to as well. Just yeah. with. Yeah. But when in doubt, ask questions. Yeah. Be curious about other people. No one's going to be like, that's a dumb question. Like, no. And personal questions. Screw them. Screw When's them. When's the last time you had sex? Like, you know, yeah, normal like stuff. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any sort of rashes that were like weird and uncomfortable? Downstairs that you like went to your doctor yeah. like submitted a my health request yeah. about. Exactly. Yeah. Those are like normal good questions. So That's definitely take that ask. advice. All right. We're beginning our initial descent into the end of this episode <laughs> here. I'm going to read a quick review. Fasten your seatbelts and lift your trade tables. Here this we go. This one is called adding value and I can't see who, who wrote it. All right. Anyway, dear demoted, thank you so much for adding value to my life. I'm a corporate adjacent parentheses, MBA work from home and work in ops. And love this pod so much. For what it's worth, I'm one of those women that also enjoys D&D &D and video games from time to time. Let's go. You're Is this cool your one. soulmate? Becca, look out. <laughs> look out. So fun that this podcast captures several niche interests and experiences for me. Keep it up. At Ross, please continue the sales plus nights <gasps> videos. At Natalie, your work from home vids are giving life. Interesting pod, exclamation, best. Please continue the nights. You needed that. I needed that. I probably won't do that, but I need it. I needed it. Too bad Milo moved away and I refused to put the chain metal on. Yeah. But it's all right. We fought a good fight. I loved it. And so did a lot of people. I fought a good fight for it. It's it's not for everyone. I found that I'm not for everyone and that's okay. Hey, that's the most empowering thing. I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I'm not, not everyone's but cup of tea. I am, but for the people who love us. Yeah. They love us. I'm a real niche cup of tea. I was on the red carpet this weekend. And I was like, oh, I, I'm corporate Natalie on Instagram. I do corporate jokes. And every like other creator was like, what? I'm like, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm going like, to go and walk. And you're like, not a tennis bracelet for you. I can tell that, tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah, you are not kiddo. getting a tennis bracelet. Yeah. Okay. Shout outs. Let's do it. Thank you guys for submitting these again. If you want to yep. shout out your teammate, coworker, colleague, mom, dad, yep. friend, do it here. Shout out to my homie, Hank Holm, regional sales manager from our Chicago office. As I snapped this photo, I said, look at this guy. Sales are dope. Never, ever stop selling. He smoked his next tee shot. Corporate bro would be proud. I love that. From Miles, regional sadness manager at STL. Let's go. And there's a photo of this dude on his laptop Working on in golf his course. golf course, in, in the golf cart with two phones next to him. I'm assuming a work and personal phone. Absolutely grinding. I love to see that. All right. Hello again. I'd love to give a shout out to my hubby, Tom, who's an ex-pro golfer who, while working full-time in sales, just qualified and played in the European Amateur Club Championships in Bordeaux last week. His team came in 12th and he came in top 10 himself. 
He also just got his first ELA, Enterprise License Agreement, over the line as a mid-market sales rep at Figma. They don't do enterprise deals, but he has charted uncharted territory. Proud of him and wanted to see if you'd be able to shout him out. His name is Tom, but his mates call him Tracky T because he loves using TrackMan and other golf tools. He would be good friends with my boy, Casino Thomas, who is a tinkerer. Thank you, Tracky T. Tracky T, congratulations on the uh, golf accomplishments. I dream of being that good one day. Okay, so those were our shout outs. That was our episode. Please send us your holiday stories. Yes. Any holiday parties. Um, nightmares, I, confessions. Nightmares, confessions. I, in 2019, went to my last hurrah holiday party at Slack and it was epic. And so I fun. was like so drunk. Yeah. And I miss it. And I just went to like Dreamforce and with my friend who invited me and we were reminiscing and one of her coworkers was there. Okay. Send us your holiday party stories. Please make them embarrassing. Make them gruesome. Yep. Make them involve sex. Yes. <laughs> Please. Drugs, sex, rock and roll, all that shit. Exactly. Give thanks to that like button. Give thanks to that subscribe button. If you want to give thanks and leave a comment, feel free to do that too. Draw a hand turkey on the back of that subscribe button. <laughs> Should we show our hand turkeys? I drew a hand turkey. Guys, I hope you guys like it. Here are our hand turkeys. Yeah, Happy like Thanksgiving, y'all. Um, we'll see you next week on Demoted. Demoted.